Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to The Debrief. Uh, I wish that this was a happier time, but uh, unfortunately, it's the reality of what it is. And uh, so I am joined by two people, if you are a Sandals Church member, that you need to know. Uh, this is Jeff Y. to my left, far left, and uh, he just came on staff like what? A month ago. A month ago. Well, <laughs> I just saw you 10 days ago because right. of COVID. Yeah. yeah. And so for those of you who don't know, Sandals Church is 60% white, so welcome. Thank you, know, you to this you. wonderful, right. difficult time. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, and then I want to introduce Sandals Church. Uh, most of our church does not know our polity, uh, Lacey. Mm -hmm. They don't know how we're set up. Mm -hmm. So um, Lacey is on our board. And mm -hmm. so the way that Sandals Church is structured, uh, we have our pastors, and then above those pastors, I'm the lead pastor. And then we have an oversight board of people that watch over, make sure, you know, uh, with all the money, I'm not building a house in Hawaii, I'm not doing crazy things, but they exercise authority over me. Mm. And Lacey, uh, who's been a good friend for a long time, somebody that I've looked up to, uh, I, I knew that we needed uh, his input and his advice a couple of months ago, and so I invited him to oversee me at Sandals Church, and he has taken on that role, and I'm very oh, grateful for amen. you. It's and. An you know, it's just it's just a pleasure and an honor to serve you. And I've been able to preach at Lacey's church. Mm -hmm. It's great, just fantastic church mm -hmm. uh, right here in Reno Valley. But it's really a, a regional church. I mean, right. you guys pull from everywhere. Multi-site. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So uh, just an incredible, incredible church. And uh, these are two men that I love. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I know Lacey better. Uh, but you and I will get to know each other mm -hmm. better. Um, and, you know, I just didn't want to have, you know... A bunch of white people at Sandals Church talking about racial reconciliation. That's not helpful. No. And I think that's a big part of the problem is uh, black people tend to talk amongst black people and white mm -hmm. people tend mm -hmm. to talk amongst white people. Right. And we just keep kicking this can down the road. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. um, so this is the second riots that I've lived through. So the first, I was fresh out of the military mm -hmm. in Los Angeles during the Rodney right. King yep. Yep. Uh, sure. uh, beatings that then led to the riots and got to see the horror of that. Um, and just, you know, the negative impact and the outcome of that in our community for years to come. Mm -hmm. uh, and then now we're living this here personally, yeah. and um, it's, just, hmm. it's just terrible, it's awful, uh, it's ugly. And what I would just say is, why don't you just got, introduce yourself and why you wanted to be here, yep. um, what you hope to get out of this, and then we'll kind of move forward with some, just, just some discussion and some questions. And uh, we will take some live questions, as long as they're, you know, they cannot be profane, uh, right. Please don't insult with a question. Mm -hmm. We want this to be a learning experience mm -hmm. where Amen. we can try to Amen. try to move this forward. Amen. Uh, and I have to say, uh, Lacey, most of my comments, most, mm -hmm. have been, I think, people hurting, seeking truth and wisdom. Mm -hmm. Some have been horrifically ugly right. mm -hmm. and nasty, mm -hmm. and some have been worthy of reporting to mm -hmm. police. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So I don't know what you've gotten, but you it, know, it, I'm glad you're here. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so let's start with Lacey. Mm -hmm. Why are you here? I mean, you're the first person I texted. I told my church I called you. I texted you. Uh -huh. I got to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So. No, I'm glad you thought about me and glad that you reached out to me. L let me say up front that I'm not the authority and the only voice for African Americans in the black community. We are a divergent people and we have different opinions. So some things that I'll say is just my opinion and what I feel the Spirit has put on my heart. Mm -hmm. But there will be African Americans in your church, in my church, in society at large that will vehemently disagree with my point yeah. of view. But I try to approach it from a biblical point of view and a, a humanistic point of view. But that's not the world we live in right now. Yeah. So we need to understand there's two sides of, of a story, two sides to the equation. And, and the truth is, African Americans, especially African American youth, are frustrated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now it's a generational divide. <clears throat> of course, I'm 59, and I told my church yesterday that in my youth, in my teens, it's a hundred percent chance I would have been out there marching. Yeah. Also. Yeah. Right. But I have evolved. I'm more mature than that, and there's a better way to approach it. But sometimes that falls on deaf ears. But yeah. violence is never the answer. But people are angry with the police brutality, and we can get more into that in a, in, in a second. But it is a reality that racism still exists, even in the church and even in our society. And for individuals just to dismiss it, saying they just need to get over that, that just adds fuel to the mm -hmm. fire. So we yeah, need to no. kind of break some of those things no. down. I agree. I agree. Well, thank you for being here. Uh, man, wow. Um, first of all, I can almost uh, say ditto to all of that. Um, uh, because sometimes I feel like my comments or where I'm coming from, um, there is um, 
um, a group of individuals of the darker hue, mm -hmm. not the lighter hue, uh, but the darker hue um, that would not agree with some of the statements that I would probably uh, say. But um, I kind of come from a different um, vantage point where the first half of my life, so I'm 41, mm -hmm. the first half of my life was the black church. Mm -hmm. and, and that was my foundation. And I, I love me some church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the second part of my life, the last 20 years have been white church. And so with that, I feel like, man, I feel like God has given me this perspective mm -hmm. that maybe not uh, a lot of other people possibly have. And in fact, it was when I, when I started stepping into the white side of things, which I was pushed to it because mm -hmm. I went to an all white Christian college mm -hmm. and uh, I started seeing some things. And I think that's when the righteous anger started to come up. Mm -hmm. And I just said, why are we so divided? the church. Mm -hmm. And then at Fuller Seminary, that's when I started diving myself into racial reconciliation mm -hmm. in the church. So this, mm -hmm. this topic hits deep right here with me, hits right home. Yeah. And so um, I just thank you so much. And honestly, and I know you probably would say the exact same thing, Pastor Matt, thank you so oh, much. Yeah, no, Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, no, I'm, I'm serious. <clears throat> you, you as a white, lighter hue pastor opening this conversation up mm -hmm. is exactly the place and the stance that white senior leaders need to do. And not only that, but asking individuals like ourselves, like, hey, help me, help me understand and speak into this. So thank you so much. Yeah, Amen. absolutely. And I, you know, I've had to do some soul searching. Um, and, and really recently, I've really looked at myself and actually, actually what it was, was the Hong Kong protests. Mm -hmm. And I was frustrated with some of my uh, NBA players that I really look up to mm -hmm. and their silence on the issue. And That's I realized great. that economy drives outrage mm -hmm. for a lot of us. And so I looked at myself and I said, <laughs> okay, so is the reason I'm not speaking out, and I, and I, and I, had, to, I had to look at, I'm going to offend and lose some white people. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to offend. And so the, the reason that Hong Kong is this, this thing is because China is, is, is the world's second largest economic power. Right. And so to yep. speak against means people lose jobs, money, houses, careers. And so I yep. think a lot of white pastors even, even if they don't think it, I think if they examined it, they would mm -hmm. say, okay, there's some racism in my church. And mm -hmm. I mean, I've had people direct message me, Pastor, I'm leaving your church. Yeah. Pastor, I'm leaving your church. Yeah, and sure. and Lacey and I, I mean, w one of the things that we've communicated back and forth over COVID is how's your giving doing? How right. are you doing? <laughs> sure. Right? Sure. Uh, because black churches and, and, and predominantly white churches, we can't function without margin. Mm -hmm. And so... so I, I've realized that I think, especially now, a lot of white pastor, white churches man, we're tightening our belts. Like th this is, and this isn't poor me, this is poor us. This right. is a tough time for yeah. us mm -hmm. yeah. because we're trying to keep our heads above water. And, so, you know, let's say your largest giver, you know, you don't know if they're racist or not, but they might be. Mm -hmm. You know, is this the time where mm -hmm. you're willing to, right. and it's easy to be bold with other people's money. It's easy, it's easy, it's easy to be convicted when you have right. nothing on the table. But when I have, you know, 200 employees, you're, you're one of them, mm -hmm. that needs me to make wise decisions yep, yep, and not yeah, sure. be like, hey, welcome, I'm glad you've been here 30 days, and now you're done. Right, yeah, it's right. been a good run. Yeah. So I, I think that I've had to, to look at that, and then, so that was the first like shot over the bow, uh, to use a naval terminology <laughs> in my Jeff Y voice. <laughs> um, Jealous of that voice. Right. Oh, man. <laughs> and then the second one, Lacey, and this is just, you know, really personal. Um, so b before I react at least recently, the first thing I'll do is I'll text Lacey. Lacey, have you seen this? Mm -hmm. Lacey, because what I've realized is my eyes, mm -hmm. my eyes don't see what Lacey sees. Right, right. So I want to know, and I, and here's the thing is I know and love Lacey. Lacey was somebody, I, man, I, the first time I met him, mm -hmm. uh, you don't remember this, but we were at the Grove and the Grove was building its, you know, just this mm -hmm. massive building, right? Mm -hmm. And Lacey are like two homeless pastors, like, yeah, one day we're going <laughs> to do this. And, um, and I just remember looking to Lacey instantly, and I'm drawn to leadership. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I was like, that guy's a leader. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to know him. He Just his exuberance, his passion. I'm going to do something yeah. with my life. And so I love that. So, so I, I, I've learned from Lacey. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been able to grow uh, in our friendship slowly over the years, and I'm hoping that it's going to be a long friendship. Amen. It will. But, but here's the thing, Lacey, that got me, and I got to tell you, I was convicted. Um, I don't identify with the white officer with his knee on uh, George Floyd. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just never have. That's not me. It was satanic. Yeah, but you know who I identified is. with? Mm -hmm. I identified with the white guy writing paperwork, walking around right. while gotcha. George Floyd is saying, I can't breathe. Right. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I felt like the Holy Spirit said, 
Matt, that's you. Hmm. That's you. Your, 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 your knee is not on the neck, but you are not lifting the knee. Hmm. And I got, I got really convicted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think part of it for me is, and, and, there, and, and there's things, you know, guys, that I would love to share, but it would put you in a bad spot. It, it, I, I think I, I, I just, I have, to be, I have to be careful, and let's just put that out there. Okay. And I know you two have to be careful mm-hmm. because, mm-hmm. You, you know, yep. right? You, you pastor a black church, mm-hmm. and so I'm, I'm tentative. But I think that I've viewed racism... I've understood it's a problem, but you're, in 2012, I took my family to Vietnam. My mom was very frightened about me going to Vietnam mm-hmm. because she had high school friends that died. Mm-hmm. The average age of a person who died in Vietnam was 19. Mm-hmm. So she graduated with people and they were dead six months later mm-hmm. in droves, 57,000 of them. Mm-hmm. So Vietnam was a very dangerous place for her. It wasn't for me. I didn't experience that. Mm-hmm. I didn't walk through that. It wasn't my life. And we were there and we were on a boat in Vietnam and they raised the Chinese flag. Mm-hmm. And this Frenchman says, what does that mean to you? <laughs> Big old fat Frenchman. <laughs> and I said, it wasn't my war. Mm-hmm. And that's how I think I viewed the civil rights movement is it wasn't my war. Mm, good analogy. And so yep. I've, yep. I've dismissed it. And the same way I overlooked my mother's pain and my mother's fear, because it was very real for her, I think I've overlooked mm-hmm. uh, the pain of, of, of black people that have lived this and walked this mm-hmm. And people are not dying in Vietnam, but we still have young black men in particularly dying in our country. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. there's still a slaughter. Mm-hmm. And, um, um, and, 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 and here's, here's my white congregation. I know what they're going to say. They're going to say, what about? Mm-hmm. What about? Mm-hmm. And, and here's what I would encourage you to do is we, we're all going to run to all of the stories and the narrative that we, we tell ourselves mm-hmm. to make us feel secure and safe where we are with the position that we hold. So don't what about, because somebody posted, Lacey, what about all the babies killed in abortion? Thank you. Thank you for that, mm-hmm. right? I mean, we could do that all day long. Mm-hmm. We, we, we had, we had uh, a middle-aged black man on the ground crying out for help, mm-hmm. and, and aid was not rendered. Now, I was a police officer. I know you were in the military. I was a right. military policeman. I had a brother who was a cop for 15 yeah. years. So yeah. here's our training. Yeah. Like, if you're resisting arrest, it's, it's on, right? Right, sure. Things happen. Things go wrong. We can all criticize. It's different when, when you're in the moment. Mm-hmm. But as soon as someone is no longer a threat and they're on the ground, mm-hmm. your job is to render aid immediately, mm-hmm. immediately. And they shouldn't have been, they, 911 call, he should have been sat up. He should have been cared for instantly. Yeah. Right. And something happened there. There's, for some reason, that black man who was saying, I can't breathe, I need help, crying for his mama. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's not a threat. Mm-hmm. There's something wrong. Mm-hmm. We, we have to, as white America, go, okay, I see that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I see that this was wrong. Then we, then we had another you know, young black man walking down a street, and we had white individuals um, who chased him down mm-hmm. you know, and pulled out guns and shot and killed him. Mm-hmm. You know? And Aubrey has every right to defend himself. Mm-hmm. No citizen has the right to put a gun to you. And, 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 you know, and then we had that the lady in New York. It's yeah. like, what right. do you do? I know. Like, well, it's like, yeah. good Lord. Mm-hmm. Um, here we go. Mm. And, uh, and this is where we are. So this is why we need to talk about it. Um, and, you know, I, I just didn't realize, so I want to apologize to you guys. You know, I just didn't realize how important it is as a white pastor that I say, I see this, mm-hmm. I agree with this and that I'd be willing to take the consequence for saying that. Um, and so I apologize for not saying it sooner. Uh, I think I've tried to play the role of mediator, mm-hmm. you know, but I haven't said, okay, what's the cost, right? That's what Jesus does for us. Right. You know, he invites us to, to count the cost. Um, and this is going to be an ugly road. This is a long road. We have hundreds of years of history of this. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. And yes. centuries. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a difficult, ugly, nasty thing, but we're never going to... I tell my church all this the time. A couple weeks ago, the sermon, the first step is be real about where you are. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. And where we are is not where a lot of us think we are. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. all right, I'm going to talk forever. So any yeah. thoughts on what I've said? Well, there will always be, will be racism in the world. So we have to understand that. But let me do something what I did with my church yesterday during my sermon. I think this is relevant because people want to know why are African-Americans so angry and I wrestled with this. I, I was going to start a new sermon series, and I said it'd be tone deaf for me to, and I actually was going to preach on the Lord's Prayer, but even that mm. would have been tone deaf if I didn't deal with the issue. Mm. Yeah. Right. So I, I read this list here, and I said, this is what white America needs to understand, 
even though I disagree with the violence and, and the protests that is not really honoring the life uh, of George, but we have to understand why these young people feel this way. So I, I read this list here of those who have been killed by police. Philando Castile, killed by police, no conviction. Terrence Crutcher, same thing, no conviction. Sandra Bland, who was arrested by police, put in a police jail cell and died in the jail cell. They don't know how she died, no conviction. Eric Gardner, the first one who said, I can't breathe, mm -hmm. selling cigarettes on the corner, killed by the police, no conviction. Michael Brown, no conviction. Rakia Boyd, no conviction. Sean Bell, no conviction. Tamir Rice, 12 years old, toy gun, within five seconds of the police officer getting out of the car, shot and killed a 12-year-old, mm -hmm. okay? No conviction. Freddie Gray, no conviction. Dan Roy Henry, no conviction. Oscar Grant III, no conviction. Kendrick McDade, no conviction. Anaya Jones, no conviction. Ramarley Graham, no conviction. Amduo Diallo, no conviction. Trayvon Martin, who of course George Zimmerman, Zimmerman I think that's the way you pronounce it, followed him and killed him. And then I told the church how callous that is, that he tried to sell the gun that he killed this young man with online and the uh, site shut it down eventually. Mm. But he was trying to sell the gun that he killed Trayvon Martin with, but no conviction. Mm. John Crawford, no conviction. Jonathan Farrell, no conviction. So there is a problem with what's going on in our society when all of these police officers can get off. And now I'm a law abiding citizen. Yeah. Yeah. I'm more conservative than I am a liberal. So sometimes we put the labels on African Americans, right. Right. well he's just a liberal. liberal. I'm a conservative. Right. For me, it's black or white. There's really no gray area. I had to kind of challenge myself because I don't understand why people just don't get certain things. <laughs> but we all have our, our biases. Mm -hmm. But for me, I, I'm in the middle. There's African Americans that I would come out and say, you're wrong. And same thing on the other right, side of the right. coin. But we have this divided country. And it's divided right now because of what's going on in the White House. Mm -hmm. Now, full disclosure, there were some African Americans that did not like me because I voted for Barack Obama the first term. But because of his stance during his second term, I did not vote for him. Mm. And I had African-Americans sure. leave my church. Sure. Mm. I had one African-American call me and said, Bishop, you broke my heart. Mm. Just like that, you broke my heart. I can't believe you criticized on and on and on. I'm going to speak truth to power. And that's what we need to understand, mm -hmm. that there's a difference between African-Americans. We don't all think alike. We all don't do the same things. And we need to be given that freedom to voice our opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't have all the answers, but the truth is there is racism. We know in Riverside, California, there's still racism. Yeah, sure. We, we, we know that there's bias. And if I, I don't want to take all this time, but when I first moved to the Orange Crest area of Riverside, right. moved from the Fontana area, knew nothing about this area, I just saw that there was a house available. Orange Crest. For those of you who are not from this area, if there's a crest behind the name, it's a good area. <laughs> Wood Crest, Canyon Crest, Orange Crest. Right. My first experience at Albertsons on Trout Wine in Van Buren, I'm standing in line, and a white gentleman behind me said, hey, do you live here? And I turned around and said, yes. I didn't realize he was implying that black people live in Moreno Valley and mm. white people with means live in this area. Mm. So those are the type of things that go on behind the scenes that we don't want to deal with. And nobody has to answer, but if the church doesn't stand up to declare yes. that this is wrong and we won't get it right, but we need to try to get it right, mm. nothing's ever going to change. And that's honestly what's going on behind the scenes in America yeah, with these amen. young black people. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and I would probably say it's interesting um, how many believers in Jesus Christ um, connect themselves to policy and politics mm -hmm. rather than the gospel. Mm -hmm. And so those individuals who were upset just because of who you voted for, mm -hmm. and honestly just shows me where their true allegiance lies. Mm -hmm. And I think honestly that's part of uh, one of the big issues is that we have um, followers of Jesus Christ who identify first with a political party, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> you know, um, uh, are you an elephant or a mule? We're supposed to be connected to the lamb. Right. And so it's interesting how that becomes our identity rather than understanding your identity is found in Christ. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's so telling. It's so telling when you get that email, when you get that phone call 
of where their allegiance lies. Mm-hmm. Um, it's interesting, Pastor Matt, you said how you identify with that, that other cop kind of, you know, it's kind of writing, yeah. you know. Um, Doing my thing. It's interesting because um, yeah. um, if you've ever been uh, to Israel, which is, I mean, that's, if you can go to Israel, go. But I remember being, um, going to the Vodka Shem, I think it's what it's called, you know, the, basically the Holocaust Museum. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they showed, what was crazy to me was you open up, there's this door, and it shows how many people, um, individuals who were German, who ended up leaving their occupation to go and help grab up all of these Jewish individuals to kill. And, and you saw firemen, you saw policemen, and you saw pastors. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And my heart broke. I started crying when I read these pastors who were mm-hmm. a part of the regime, who were part mm-hmm. of the agenda. Mm-hmm. And it just goes to show how fast really anybody mm-hmm can be switched. It's funny because mm-hmm. yesterday, literally yesterday, um, mm-hmm. um, I was so excited to show my kids, I got four young kids, um, The Wizard of Oz. Mm-hmm. And, um, and um, you know, there's a part in the beginning where um, that, uh, you know, the Wicked Witch of the West, mm-hmm. but, you know, she's actually um, someone in their community before, you know, her house yeah. gets torn up, whatever. She's trying to take Toto away from um, Dorothy. And the, the scene is so interesting. She comes in the home, and she says, hey, I have papers to take that dog away from you, Dorothy. And Auntie Am and uh, her uncle just allowed it to happen. She goes away running, uh, and, and Auntie Am says, you know, I've been wanting to tell you and give you a piece of my mind for the last 25 years. And then she says, but I'm a Christian, so I won't. And she left. Mm-hmm. And that just struck me. Mm-hmm. The church, the Christians, we are not speaking up even though we should. Mm-hmm. Right. We're not taking a stance, even though we should. Right. Mm-hmm. And what you're saying, Pastor Matt, what you're saying is what the majority, definitely the lighter hue yeah. churches and pastors are doing, are white brothers and sisters who name the name of Christ. Mm-hmm. And to me, I just, to me, the answer mm-hmm. is the church. Yeah. I had one person Always. say like, well, well, what's the answer? What's the answer? Mm-hmm. Like, what's the answer? I'm like, the answer is Jesus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and who the only folk who got Jesus? Right. And understand that we are not citizens of this world. Mm-hmm. We are citizens of heaven. Right. And we are ambassadors. So that mm-hmm. means we have an agenda. Mm-hmm. Right. And our agenda supersedes any earthly agenda. Mm-hmm. Right. And so if we can discover that, and that goes for white and black, we both mm-hmm. have um, um, this, this mandate, this, agen- this assignment mm-hmm. that God has given us. And there's a reason why you are in that shell. And there's a reason why we're in this shell. Right. There's a yeah. reason. Yeah. You don't have to apologize about that. No, we don't have to apologize for that. Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, and we need to understand that we are better together. Mm-hmm. And that's what Satan knows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but that's what we're doing really well. Right. Mm-hmm. We're wrestling f- against flesh and blood. And some of these agendas right now, oh, we need to, and I understand it. You know, right? I, I, I understand the, the MLK said, um, I don't condone the violence, but I understand it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's where I'm at. I, I, I mean... I really don't think I would be a part of everything that's going on as far as the violence and all that. Now, granted, any psychologist will uh, psychologist will tell you with push to the limits with any yeah, people sure. group, they will go crazy. Right. Yeah, and let me just speak to that. You know, to all of our white people who yeah. are aghast, right? Sure. sure yeah. At, at what's happening in the streets, I did not receive one email. Hmm. One letter, one phone call from any black members of our church telling me to go against the governor, just do whatever, our right. rights, we got to, like, so Interesting. all of my gun-toting white people were super ticked off. Interesting. Mm-hmm. And we've, we've, we've felt this for eight weeks, ten weeks. Yeah, right, right, right. So then you feel this your whole life, right? And so you just have to imagine, look, there's going to be, I'm not condoning it, right, yeah. but you want, they wanted me to take to the streets. Sure. Man, I got, I got a white lady, I mean, she's a wonderful lady, send me this whole email, you just do whatever you got to do, and... I'm just like, whoa, she's lost it, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and people lose well, it. And yes, uh, right, I think right. we have to be careful about joining the riots. And, yeah. and this is what I told my wife on the way here. As Christians, we fail to realize it was a riot that crucified Jesus. Right. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's and right. here's what the riot said. Give us Barabbas. Mm-hmm. Set Barabbas free. free. Mm-hmm. Crucify Jesus. And it was a politician, Pilate, who was trying to placate the crowd mm-hmm. And he did what he knew what was wrong. And so we, we have to be careful in this. We can understand the rioting. We can understand the rage. But, it, you know, it's, you know, so I got, you know, creamed. I asked Lacey to, to, to look at my video. Hmm. Uh, I, I got creamed by people, you know, who are 
conservative, please support. Wow. And you said the word murder. Well, that's what I believe that it that yep. it was. And me too. You know, uh, mm-hmm. but then I got creamed on the other side. You didn't go far enough, mm-hmm. and you know you're pathetic, and wow. and you know by by quoting scripture, do not let do not sin or do not uh, sin while you're angry. Do mm-hmm. not be controlled by anger because it gives a foothold to the devil. Then right. I got, then I got, and so now you're you know I, I'm like. Whoa! So I just quoted two scriptures, one that's about justice, I'm wrong, yeah. mm-hmm. and then I quoted one about anger, and I'm wrong, mm-hmm. and it's like, man, and and that's where I think it's so hard to lead during this time, because uh, it's volatile, yes. and uh, t- take racism out of this. This has been the, t- the toughest 10 weeks in American, uh, maybe since like World War II, yeah, just absolutely. in terms of being, yeah. 100%. Yes, you know, uh, the worst economic Mm-hmm. Uh, future that we've seen since the Great Depression. You know, we're, we're scared to death, especially in the black community. Yes. It's, they've yes. been adversely yes. affected by yes. uh, this disease, right? We're yep. all trapped inside. Right. We're all upset. We're all angsty. People were already right. ready to, to blow. Yeah. And then this this I these know. things happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, Gosh. you know... And, and I mean, it, it, it's it's a convoluted issue, and and I and I think Lacey, you know, the conversation Lacey and I've been talking about. He said there's there's not just a gap between white and black, but there's a gap between young and old. Mm. Absolutely. And I and I think that that gap mm. is three things. I, I think that old black people, and you can obviously correct me because I'm not black or old. <laughs> um, they've dealt with racism their whole life. Yeah. But here's the changes in the last in in, in my in my livelihood. You know, Lacey's a little more mature. Mm. Yes, he is. So uh, here's what I've seen in my livelihood. We, we begin to tr- we, we begin to realize at my birth. So you're 73. What, what year were you born? No, you're 78. Oh, 78. Yeah. 78. So I'm 71. Okay. So right. So I've I've only known busing. Yeah. Right. So I've only I've only known an education system. Yeah. Where yep. we we had black students, and as a white student, I was bused across town. 20 minutes. Wow. Yeah. So, right? That's that's mm-hmm. my upbringing. But here's what's new. Uh, moral degradation. That's mm-hmm. new. It's never going away. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, a, it's, a re, it's a rejection of Judeo-Christian values. Mm-hmm. So we have that. And then I think for about the last 30 years, we, we see downward pressure, particularly on minorities, and their incomes are falling, mm-hmm. and uh, globalization has left them behind. Mm-hmm. So people mm-hmm. that are doing mm-hmm. well, they're doing oh, fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and that's why, you know, uh, you see the super uh, elite rich white people on both sides, because do, they're unaffected. Mm-hmm. It doesn't yes. matter. You, you right. get to a point where right. it doesn't matter who's in the White House. And so I think you have, you, you have, the young people have the racist reality. They also have, people don't know God. That's a mm-hmm. huge issue. Right. And then you have, man, it, it is just depressing as a young person to have $100,000, $150,000 of school if you went to school. Yeah, sure. mm-hmm. Right, right. And to know that your options are Starbucks, Chick-fil-A, mm-hmm. and the movie theater. Yeah. And so I think there's this, our, our, our economic system, and I'm a capitalist, unapologetically, mm-hmm. not a socialist. Sure. I think socialism makes it miserable for everyone, right? I'm going to get the emails. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I'll say this, our capitalistic system, as it is, mm-hmm is disproportionately affecting yes. minority communities. Yes. And right. I think if you if you do, if you can't yeah. see that, mm-hmm. you're you're not living in reality. And so Lacey, that's why I think it's about I think, the economics. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I think our older generation mm-hmm. has benefited economically and our younger generation is left behind mm-hmm. disproportionately so if, you know, if 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 you've grown up in a minority community and and, and if you and if you've grown up in an economically challenged community and Right. So that that's my thought. What do you think? And, and let me Piggyback on that. Let me state that. And feel free to disagree. Hammer. No, 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 it's fine. We're having an open conversation. Mm-hmm. I did not grow up in a depressed neighborhood. I did not grow up in poverty. So I have a different point of view. Right. That's why I said on the outset that yep. people may disagree with my point of view. Mm-hmm. I grew up in a small town in the suburb of Chicago, 27,000 people. I was a part of a very prominent family. My uncle, my father's brother, was mm-hmm. the pastor of the largest church, not just in the city, but in the Chicagoland area. Mm-hmm. My grandfather moved from Mississippi with his brother. My grandfather had 11 kids. His brother had 10. So we had Sykes all throughout the neighborhood. <laughs> we had Sykes uh, Beauty Supplies, Sykes Grocery Store, two Sykes Grocery Stores, and the largest church. Mm-hmm. So I never wanted for anything. Mm-hmm. The car that I came to California when I was transferred from Pensacola to come to San Diego when I was in the Navy, my father gave me his best car. Mm-hmm. 
not the lesser car. He gave me his best car. So I say all that to say I've always had things that were good. I didn't grow up in the ghetto. But when you look at those individuals who have been denied from yes. their point of view, yeah. those people who have a lack, then they are angry because they see the gap between rich and poor yeah. increasing. So they want to push back and they want to fight. And when we are insensitive of not providing health care, not providing a pathway for education, I mean, it's ridiculous. I put all my uh, children through college and I'm still paying those bills. Yeah. But it's ridiculous how much you have to pay to go to school. So until we start dealing with the economics and this is what I told my followers on Facebook. That's why you cannot destroy your community. Right. And I got a lot of pushback when people say burn it down. That is not wise. I actually say you, you don't defecate where you eat. Right. Only I didn't use the word defecate because I, I, I saw it. I was yeah, like, that guy's got some Yeah, guts. yeah I kind of went there. <laughs> because I, I, I actually wanted, told my wife what you said. <laughs> I, I wanted to have that shock right. value yeah, yeah. Right. because right, right. We, we saw the same thing in Ferguson, yeah. in Baltimore. The list goes on and on. The Watts riot. You know, we see that over and over again. You, you're burning down your your place where you had to go and eat. Mm -hmm. You're burning down the place where you buy your food and you, you get your haircut and your nails done. My barber is a member of my church and I get my hair cut at House of Beauty. So what if people in Moreno Valley, which they're going to march this evening, I believe, if they go to House of Beauty and burn that down mm. because they're upset. Mm. Now he's out of a job. One of my um, members is a beautician there. She's out of a job. I can't get my haircut there. Yeah. And now we got to go across to the white neighborhood to get our supplies. Come it's counterproductive. Yeah. So these are the type of conversations we need to have. We understand the anger, but the Bible says be angry, yet sin not. Sin not. Mm -hmm. So that's what the church needs to do to step in to not only to hear the pain, but to feel the pain. Not to sympathize. We get enough sympathy. Empathize. Empathize. Mm -hmm. Yes. I feel your pain. I understand what you're going through. How can I help? And that's the conversation that's difficult because these young bucks, as I call them, will push back. Yeah, sure. They're pushing back against me. They're going to push back against you. Yeah. But we cannot be afraid to agree to disagree because nothing is ever going to change. And we'll be right back in this situation a year from now, two years from now. It's a repetitive cycle. But the church, the church that Jesus Christ died for, should unify us. Yes. Yeah, I yeah. don't see black people. I see, don't see white people. I see Christian folks. That's why I'm able to commingle with anybody. That's right. That's and, right. and the truth is, as African Americans, we have to know how to right. deal with everybody. We don't have an option. We have to know <laughs> how to get along. Right. Mm -hmm. That's why sometimes we have to divest ourselves mm -hmm. just to fit in. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, we have to yes, not yes. really say how we feel because then we'll be ostracized right. because we are the minority. And quite frankly, with our Latino brothers, they're knocking it out of the park. Yeah. And that's something else I stress with African Americans. If you're watching me, if we don't get together with the economics, we don't stand a chance. Our Latino brothers, they will support one another. We still don't really support one another. And again, the young folks who disagree, we still spend our money the wrong way. Yeah. We need to understand that you spend with me, I spend with you. The dollar should flip over at least seven times in our community before we let it go outside of our community. That's the conversation we need to have. Mm. Not just give me, give me, give me, not just burn it down, burn it down, but how can we have an economic stand in this country? Yeah. Because the only thing America understands is economics. That's right. They love your green dollar that's no right. matter what the color of your skin right. is. Yeah. And that's the drum beat that I'm beating yeah. so that people can understand that is the only way we're going to have a foot in this yeah. world. Uh, one of my greatest, uh, I, I think he's the greatest living uh, American philosopher. Uh, unfortunately, Almost no black people have ever heard him or ever read him. His name is Thomas Sowell, and he wrote a book called Wealth, Poverty, and Politics. Mm -hmm. um, and it, is, it will blow your mind. Mm. It will blow your mind. Um, it will challenge your thinking. Uh, he is, cons I, 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 don't, I think I would guess he's conservative. I don't know, so just be forewarned. But uh, he's real. Snail? Thomas Sowell. 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 Okay. He wrote a book called Wealth, Poverty, and Politics. He's okay. written... And every book that he writes is like thousands of pages, right. so just be, be aware. But uh, he's, he's just a great, great thinker, and, and I would look at that because economy is so much of it, and even in the Inland Empire. Totally. So we, got, you know, we've got, we have a, a national and now a global audience, but the Inland Empire is not, I mean, they would say, we, people in the Inland Empire, politicians would say we're an economic hub. Los Angeles is an economic hub. Right. You know, Seattle, San Diego. Mm -hmm. It drives me crazy when our young people drive to Coast, you know, uh, what's the big mall in Orange County? The real nice one. Uh, oh, gosh. 
can't. Anyways, they go shop there. It's yep. like they buy their car there. You, you need those dollars here, and mm -hmm. that's the that's the way economies yep. come up. Right. And and when we don't do that, you know, everything falls apart. And so we have to, you know, buy from one another. And here's the thing. Here's the danger of rage. You know, during mm -hmm. the L.A. riots, remember, mm -hmm. uh, black owners would put signs that black say owned. black owned. Black owned. Here's right. the problem. When you're rioting. You're not reading. <laughs> you, you're not reading when you're writing. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I mean, it, this, and, and a lot of this uh, is not black anger. A lot of this is anger. A lot of this, a lot of these writers, you know, like uh, J.R. Smith, uh, the former Cleveland Cavaliers mm -hmm. player. Mm -hmm. I mean, his car is getting vandalized by a little white kid, I'm sure, who drove his mm -hmm. convertible from whatever suburban mm -hmm. area he was. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Did you guys see that? And he's spray painting horrible. and kicking in the windows of horrible. his car, and Jared mm -hmm. Smith, you know, ran mm -hmm. him down and whipped him, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's like, look, this is just. We just have to be honest. We have a we have a race problem in this country. We also got some violent people mm -hmm. that are looking for opportunities, right. and they don't care. And that's another point. So it wasn't just black youth. There's no. a, a conglomerate out there, but we still have to call it for what it is. It's still wrong. The yeah. looting detracts from the situation detracts, at hand. Exactly. So we need to push back against that. But again, if we don't give these young people Amen. something that they yeah. can hold on to, we're going to revisit this <clears throat> again. And Riverside, we have a curfew tonight. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Because there's a threat of something happening right in our own city. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So no, this is not going to go away. I know it's ridiculous. We we need to have you know, and I mean, there's there's a broader conversation here, um, you know, and. You know, it's it's some things Trump talked about, and I don't know why he's stopped talking about. But but one of the problems we have as a country is we spend our money everywhere else, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we have problems here that need to be dealt with. Right. And and we've worked real hard to make Europe a nice place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. We, we've put a lot of black brothers and sisters over there in Europe to keep it a nice place. Mm -hmm. We put we put minorities all over the world mm -hmm. to prote protect everybody. And that costs real dollars, mm -hmm. real dollars. And those dollars could be spent here to help lift people out of poverty, to help communities, to keep communities safe, um, and, and to really begin to change this and stem this. And I think that as Americans, we need to change the way we view the world uh, because we're, we're not the world's mom and dad. Mm -hmm. And we need to quit acting mm -hmm. like it. And right. by the way, they don't like it. Right. So no, right. we need to take exactly. some of those dollars and bring them back. And I was really hoping that Trump, because he's the first president I've ever heard say, Guys, we're getting ripped off, and we are getting ripped mm -hmm. off. Mm -hmm. So we need to bring those dollars back. We need to do something about Chicago, Baltimore, Ferguson. I didn't yep. even know Minneapolis Detroit. had a problem. Mm. I had no idea. Had you guys heard of Minneapolis before this? Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> like, no. I've been there once, I think. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Mm -hmm. you, know, uh, it, you know, so I didn't even know we got real problems here, and there's a growing economic divide, and we need to figure out a system to help people rise, right. to help people have a voice, and white people need to care about black people. And, yeah. um, you know, it, it just it, it, it matters, but I don't just think it's race. I think it's economic. I, I think That's that key. there's that, – that our, 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 our poor communities are overwhelmed. Yes. They're overwhelmed, mm -hmm. and – uh, the gap is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I mean, you know, Tammy and I this this weekend went to San Clemente and there was a protest there. And, mm -hmm. you know, we were just watching it. And I'm like, man, there's a stark difference. And I know we have people from our church in San Clemente and God bless you. You get to live there. It's way different <laughs> than here. It just is. Yeah. And people see that. And um, let's take some questions. Unless you guys wanted to cover something else. Well, I just wanted to say really yeah, quickly. Yeah, um, you know, uh, you know, the reason why MLK got shot was because of economics. Um, he started messing with people's pockets, you know, cause he saw the, uh, the economic <clears throat> ingest that was, um, um, towards, uh, people of color. Mm -hmm. And so when that happened, that's, that's why he was gunned down. Mm -hmm. And so, and I would say, um, ever since the United States got started, um, w the, the real evil has been, um, power and money. Mm -hmm. And even Always. Jesus, and even Jesus mm -hmm. said, you know, um, um, Jesus said it's 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 more difficult for a Christian to get to heaven, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. than passing a uh, camel through the eye of a needle. needle. Mm -hmm. And so um, there's something about money that takes us away from where God wants us, mm -hmm. and and it's not it's not evil, but it's the root of all evil, mm -hmm. you know. And so I think that's a that's a large um, that's a big understanding mm -hmm. in what you said. And not only that, I just really feel like I. I I kind of have to just say this um, for what's unfortunate, uh, Pastor Matt, is that 
most individuals who should be listening to this won't be listening to this. (laughs) And so my prayer and my ask, and I know for all of us right now, is if you know someone who needs to hear this message, then send this to them. Um, You just heard that, you know, there's two individuals who are primarily conservative. And my wife and I like to say, I'm mentally conservative, but I'm I'm heart liberal. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. You know, and so um, there are individuals who need to hear this. And, And I said this to a friend of mine yesterday. I said, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, and you're really following him and wanting to be like him, you should feel compassion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you read the gospels, the two things that Jesus was about was about love and compassion. He had so much compassion on people, Mm -hmm. so much compassion because he saw them and he saw the hurt and the pain and sorrow. And he just, he had to do something. Mm -hmm. He had to do something. Mm -hmm. And so if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you should feel compassion. There's something in you. If you're not moved by Mm -hmm. all, if you're Mm -hmm. not moved by someone losing Mm -hmm. their life Mm -hmm. by a police officer putting his neck and all his weight Mm -hmm. on someone's neck and then Mm -hmm. passing away, if Mm -hmm. that doesn't make you say, oh my goodness, Mm -hmm. there is something wrong with you. Mm -hmm. And I need it. I think you need to check your spirit and your walk with Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Praise God. Because if you're still breathing, Mm -hmm. you still have time to do that. Right. Right. But I just... Like you have, where are you at? Mm -hmm. Where are you at? You need to have the, sympathy is a good start, but it needs it. Empathy. Empathy. Mm -hmm. You have to empathize. And the only way you can truly empathize Mm -hmm. is, because everyone asks like, well, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? do do?" That was Um, a good white person voice. Right. (laughs) (laughs) I got a couple of them, but I'm not going to share them right now. Just so you guys know, Jeff White is a stand-up comedian at one point in time. (laughs) So I'm trying so hard. You're you're just putting it out there and I don't want to. But what do we do? What do we do? And and I think the first thing that you need to do, um, really quick, Pastor Matt, but really quick, um, if you're a if you're a person of the lighter hue, there's something you need to do. If you're a person of the darker hue, there's something you need to right. do. Um, the Word of God says, if my people who are called by my name mm-hmm. humble, humble themselves, themselves and you pray. know, and pray mm-hmm. and seek my face, I will heal their land, mm-hmm. turn from their wicked ways. Mm-hmm. I will heal their land. Mm-hmm. So we as bo- people who are called by my name, mm-hmm. not the world, mm-hmm. right? people who are called by my, ma- my name will humble themselves. And mm-hmm. I think that's the problem as Americans, we're so arrogant, as you just said. The right. reason why we're disliked, because we're so arrogant. But humble themselves... And pray. Mm-hmm. Humility for a person of the lighter hue is to remove themselves from the place of privilege. Oh, I said it. <laughs> Jesus removed himself from the place of right. privilege. Mm-hmm. He was up on high. He removed himself from the place of privilege and come, came down to those he needed to mm-hmm. associate with mm-hmm. and to be in better relationship with. Mm-hmm. Right. If you are a person of the lighter hue, you need to take a page from Jesus, mm-hmm. and that's what you need to do. Right. Now, the next thing is, 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 is more difficult, mm-hmm. is that if you are a person of the darker hue, and I know this is hard. Mm-hmm. It's been 401 years of demoralization, mm-hmm. discrimination, oppression, um, killing, murder. But what we need to do is to forgive. Mm-hmm. And that's hard. But Colossians says, just as he forgave, mm-hmm. you should forgive. forgive. Right. And, mm-hmm. and that's super hard. Yeah. No, well, but, I would but say if it's, he, that's impossible without you, the Spirit of God. It's, <laughs> it's impossible. But, but that, you, know, you know what gives me hope? this shell doesn't give me hope. Mm -hmm. My identity in Christ, that's what gives me hope. That's the only way we can do it. Mm -hmm. And so those are, I always tell if you want to do something, first you you need to recognize, you need to be educated, Mm -hmm. but sharing life with people, hearing their story, becoming educated. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a Netflix documentary, 13th, Mm -hmm. you know, read the book, um, Just Mercy. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm a Mm -hmm. huge John Perkins fan. Uh I'm sorry, reading this stuff to educate yourself, just like you have, Pastor Matt, so. Yeah, um, that's good, go ahead. I was going to say, uh, I want to be clear that as African-Americans, we're not asking for a, a handout. Right. We're not broke as a people. Right. And to my African-American brothers and sisters, we have the monies. We have the resources. Yeah, we right. are a very creative people. Yeah. But we need to start spending it the right way. Mm-hmm. So I don't want people to push back and say, well, those oh, poor black people. Mm, and no. no, no, no. We are do resilient. We're strong. That's right. But we just want people to be honest. Mm-hmm to give us the opportunity to just be who we are, who Amen. God created us to be. That's right. That's so right. that's what, where the church comes in, that we partner together. Amen. Amen. We have the resources, but honestly, if we don't get involved in, in this political divide that's going on, the church, when I say we, right. the church. Yes, amen. Uh, it, nothing's going to change. That's right. Yeah. Nothing's going to change. That's right. No, I know. Yeah, and, I, and again, I can't, I can't emphasize enough it doesn't help at all for black people to talk together. It doesn't help at all for white people to talk, to talk together. Um, 
you know, um, you know, like I, I had some black friends that were telling me how white people think, and I was like, <laughs> what? Yeah. I just was like, I've never heard that. I've never, th you know, and that doesn't mean some, you know, it, there's a lot of white people in our country. I mean, maybe some idiot somewhere thought that yeah. way or, or some, yeah. but we got to be careful, you know, with our, with our labels and with our mm -hmm. accusations and our assumptions. Uh, I would say that most white people have no idea what to do. Right. They have no, sure. they have no yeah. idea. It feels, I would say it feels hopeless. And I would say without Christ, it really is without, without a major revival in our country, yeah. because you have to understand, uh, the only re religion I'm aware of on earth on earth, and, and maybe somebody can send a, correct me, the only religion I'm aware on, of on say earth it. that says people of different races, different right. genders, and different sexes, mm -hmm. sit down at this Come table on, and break bread mm -hmm. because this body was broken Come for you. On, it right. is a commandment to Come eat on, together, mm -hmm. to love one another. I mean, Peter, right, when the... When the when when he sees all the unclean food, what he's saying is people are unclean. Mm -hmm. Lord, I've never right. I've never had I'm dinner with a black them. man. Right. I've never right. Mm -hmm. And and the, the spirit says, "How dare you?" That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. How dare you declare something unclean? What I have go go to this guy's That's house. Right. That's right. You go to his house mm -hmm. and you eat with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I mean, he's still racist when he shows up. I'm only here because the Lord said, <laughs> right? Uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. You know, I, th that's the only reason I would do this. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 that's Peter who spent three years right. with Jesus. Come right. on, man. come on, so Matt. We we got we got to just understand that. Come on. Um, and I I was talking with another group of pastors this week. I said I think the, the whole Calvinistic argument has been completely mm -hmm. misunderstood, because I think the point that Paul is making is we are saved. We yes. are chosen. Mm -hmm. We have predestined. Mm -hmm. Lacey, right? right. Yeah. The black pastor, yep. Matt, the black, mm -hmm. you know, wow. the white pastor, right. yeah. sorry, right. yeah. Jeff, the black pastor, right? Mm -hmm. We have been chosen. Mm -hmm. right. We collectively, and, and the blood of Jesus Christ permeates beyond race, right. color, and skin. Right. And I think a, a big part of that is, and, and America in particular has this problem because of slavery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we, yes. we're blinded yes. to a, a lot of what, what the gospel is. And uh, I mean, the... Every culture, every nation on earth has had slavery. I tell this people all the time. Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. made slavery illegal the year I was born, 1971. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, so to just understand that, yeah, like, I mean, right. I, like I was, I was, the year I was born, slavery became illegal there. Mm -hmm. So, so people have been owning people in per, in perpetu, what's the word? Per, perpetuity? In particular. Wow. So I need to stick with second grade words. Right, yes. um, <laughs> you know, and, 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 and I mean... There's a lot of slavery that's going on yeah. right now with our right border now, right. that's unchecked. That's People right. are coming over. Mm -hmm. um, You're right. Uh, you know, Arnolfo that, that uh, you know, uh, works with me, I mean, he, he was smuggled across the border at 14 years old. When he got here, he owed $40,000 to the cartel. Mm -hmm. Wow. As a 14-year-old. Mm -hmm. with, with interest. Yep, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and now he's in his 40s, right? Mm -hmm. So he's had to wow. work that off or they yeah. come take his legs right. off. So we, we have to be aware that this is happening all around us. And it's not just black, white. It is, you know, uh, I think Rick Warren's the first pro person to say that uh, racism is not a skin problem, it's a sin problem, and right. so yes, it occurs. That's right. Mm -hmm. that's right. And mm -hmm. so we need to deal with it. Let's right. take this question. Yeah. Uh, I want to go to the one before that. As a young person, it's not up there, so don't read that. It was it was up there for the last 40 minutes. No. As a young person, how, how do I react to all this? So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, Lacey, we're going to kick to you, yes, yes. a teenager. Mm -hmm. I'm going to guess that's a teenager, because mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think they know what to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. No graduation, no prom, no sports. Now the cities are burning down. What, what do they do? What would you say to them? I would say know your history, the first step. Mm -hmm. Be confident in who you are. A young person going through this, they feel that they are missing, and they are missing an important part of their life, not being able to graduate, not yeah. being able to hang out with their friends. But this is a defining mm -hmm. moment that we will never forget. Mm -hmm. So for a young person, the best thing you can do is read your history. That doesn't devalue you, and that doesn't push anybody by the wayside, but you need to understand mm -hmm. why God created you in the skin that you're in. That's right. If you don't understand why God has allowed you to live during such a time as this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God does not make any mistakes. So he wanted you to be alive during this season because you are the generation that will change what we're going through. So God has given you a big brain. He's given you a great mind. He has tossed the torch to you. My generation, mm -hmm. we are still doing what we can do, but really it's the future generation right. that can bridge that gap. Mm -hmm. So you have the ideas. You have the technology. That's right. You have the ability to make a difference in this world when you stop being fearful. 
That's right. You don't acquiesce to anyone. You, you don't let anybody tell you that you have no purpose or no value in this world. So as a young person, ask God, what do you want me to accomplish? God will bless whomsoever. Mm -hmm. He will anoint whomsoever. He's not a respecter of person. Right. So you need to figure out what he wants you to do. It wasn't until I realized that God called me to preach. I've been good at a number of things. I had my own business. I raised a family. The list goes on and on. Been in the military. But it wasn't until I finally surrendered to the voice of God and he called me to teach and preach his word. Mm -hmm. That may not be your testimony, but God has something for you to do, and you have to figure that piece out. Mm -hmm. That's good. Next question. Are we supposed to condemn evil as Christians, and how do we do that with racism? Let me just say, so, Lacey... Uh, Maybe I'll let you write the forward on this book. Uh, I, I'm gonna I want to write a book called The Conversation, and it's gonna examine the difference between judgment in, in the Greek and the word condemn. Hmm. I think the word condemn means kill. Uh, so that's why Romans eight one says there is now therefore no, no condemnation. condemnation. So interesting. So yeah. I think you got to be careful to when you run out killing evil, and inevitably you become evil. So mm -hmm. so I would say I, I I think that we need to be clear. That, that evil is wrong, or excuse me, that racism is wrong, and, and it is evil, but you have to be careful when you become the judge, jury, and executioner, right. yep. because those two white Southerners, right, that, that decided that Aubrey, that Aubrey is, this, mm. is, oh is the guy that was the breaking threat. into their house. Mm -hmm. So they made the decision based upon the color of his skin. Mm -hmm. They decided that what he did was evil, and they decided they had the authority to arrest him, mm -hmm. and then they ended up killing him. Mm -hmm. So you got to be real, real careful. I, I don't know whether those two Southerners' intent was, we're, we're going to, I don't know what happened, but they started down a road where they presumed that they were in a position of authority to judge. And that's a... Yes, right. That doesn't usually no. work out well. No, right. No. Uh, e even, even, and I don't think those guys were right, but even if you, if you think you were right, um, you know, government has grand, you know, ideas of, of what we should all do. And oftentimes it works out really, really ugly. Um, you guys, it, it, how you guys want to handle that? How do you, how do we do that with racism? So I, I kind of set you up because I said condemnation is a tough word, but no, well, well, condemnation is a tough word, but it, it is it is what it is. How do we do that with racism? You call it for what it is. There we go. Uh, you, you cannot be afraid of that. There are racist white people. There yes. are racist black people. And we need to stop playing this, this jockeying and going back and forth. There are people who just dislike you because of the color of your skin. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I take offense when I walk into a room and people make the assumption, people, white people make the assumption that here's come, here comes this big black guy. Mm. You know, <laughs> th th I don't know who he is. And I see people pull away. And, right, and I have sure. to show them that I'm yes, one of right. the good ones. Right, right. And that gets irritating. Yeah, no, Instead no. of looking at us as human beings, we look at the black man specifically as a threat. Yeah. And how do we bridge that gap? I have no idea. Maybe we need to stop watching so many news channels. Oh, dude, yeah. Because our, our it, media it, is not our friend. It, it's not. And yeah. we're not going to call it any particular stations, but we need to just judge a person as an individual. As I said already, there's some black people that I don't like and white people I don't like, but mm -hmm. I look at the person's character, and you have to take that responsibility upon yourself. Yeah. Don't just paint us in a broad brush. We are a diverse people. Yeah. And what if I said that to you? Don't paint white people in a broad brush. Is that fair? It is. It yeah. is fair. But, but 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 again, understand that you are the majority. Yeah. No. So we right. have yeah, sure. to deal with you regardless yeah. of how we feel <laughs> just to survive. Right. Yeah. No. But it has to be reciprocated. Yeah. And so Lacey shared his background. Most people, like, you look at me, you're like, surfer bro, Orange County, right? <laughs> I, 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 so that, that was racist. <laughs> I grew up, I grew up, uh, uh, it, you know, if you're from Northern California and I tell you I went to Hiram Johnson High School, people stop. People stop. So when my mother would yell, put the brown boy in, because my last name is Brown, oh, all funny. the black mamas would turn around. And I'm not, I can't tell you how many times I heard this. Honey, they're all brown. Right, right. And my mom would say, that one, right. that brown boy, because <laughs> our last name is Brown. Right. And, you know, as a mother, she would get... She would passionately want her sons to play, yeah, and, sure. she, you know, she'd get caught up in the sure. moment. But yeah, I can't yeah. tell you how many times that would happen, and it would just confuse people. Uh, you know, I grew up in a very violent society. Mm. I, you know, I, I lost friends uh, of sure. color man. that were shot and killed, man. Man. Uh, too many to count. Um, mm. I've had shotguns pulled on my face by the police, mm. you know, because I've, I've been in a situation yeah, right. with people of yeah. color. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I've had that happen. Mm. I've been jumped because of white. You know, I've, I've had those things happen to me because people judged this 
right. and made an assumption. Did that make you hate them, though? Um, I, th- I think as a young man, it felt unfair. Mm-hmm. But here's the yes. thing I would tell people is, you know, I've been beat up by a black person, but, but some of my best friends were black. So, so I had this, I had a dichotomy of bad encounters with black people, and then some of my deepest, most wonderful, incredible friends were, were, were black. And, and I, had, I had to wrestle through that, and I had to realize you got to judge people, and I hate to say it, I should have listened to Martin Luther King Jr. You have to judge people based upon their character mm-hmm. because you're going to miss out on beauty. You're going to yes, miss out on Come wonder, on. and Come you're going to miss out on 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 just the, the, the gloriousness of God's creative act mm-hmm. and work that's right. amongst the people. That's right. And so, um, so, so, so that's the thing is, Lacey had, I mean, I, I just think if you looked at us... You, you would get our upbringing very, very wrong. You yeah. know, there, there, I didn't grow up in a neighborhood where the Browns owned a bunch of stuff. Mm-hmm. We didn't own anything. You know, uh, that's just that's just how it was. And so we have to be careful. Um, and one time, I can't remember, Lacey, it was one conversation we had a couple years ago. And I said, I said, how come you like me? Right? I said, what's the deal? <laughs> and he and he just said, he said, I can tell you're a good guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I and 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 that's the best compliment anybody can 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 pay you is just to say you're a good person mm-hmm. and that's what we want to work towards as, as a as a christian and then explain why yeah not because of who i am or how i was raised because right. some of us were raised broken mm-hmm. but because jesus re-raised me yeah. and he changed me and he gave me a love and he took a racist named peter yes mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and he said go eat with cornelius that's right mm-hmm. go eat with cornelius uh-huh. right and, and and we have to do that and we have to break bread and we have to we have to get right. to know each other yeah, yeah. absolutely and just said, to add on to that, I grew up in a mixed neighborhood also. Mm. Mm. So I did have white friends growing up and white teachers. So that does make a difference. Yeah. If you're segregated, white or black, then you, it's kind of not hard, but sometimes you don't want to get to know that. And maybe that's even the wrong phrase. You're uncomfortable getting to know that person because all of you have known growing up is one group of people. Yeah. And I mean, uh, I was listening to John Gray and um, oh, who was he being interviewed by? Right. Uh, Stephen Furtick. Furtick, yeah. So they, 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 they met together. And John Gray was talking about Southern Baptists, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I'm a Southern Baptist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Southern Lacey's Baptist. a Southern Baptist. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, did, I didn't know if you guys were. So uh, <laughs> the Southern Baptists don't know. I don't tell people that. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> they, they don't Watch know out. we're Southern Baptists, right? They look as. <laughs> but, but Southern Baptists came about because they wanted to, to keep slaves. Mm-hmm. So that's why there's American Baptists and Southern Baptists. So American Baptists mm-hmm. said it's wrong. Wow. Southern Baptists said it's right. Mm-hmm. So Southern Baptists have come out and, and publicly Obviously, repented yeah, and stated sure. mm-hmm. that was wrong. Right. But I grew up Southern Baptist my whole life, mm-hmm. around uh, 99.9% white. Mm-hmm. Man, I, I never heard a disparaging word towards a black person. Towards like, And I'm not saying that's everybody's experience. Sure, right, I just yeah. want you to know, like, my white grandfathers had conversions to Christianity, and it changed the way they were. Mm, I never God. heard a disparaging word mm-hmm. in my entire life. Mm-hmm. So when I hear that's how white people are raised, you need to know that's that's not... And my grandparents weren't perfect. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I'm sure. not... They're not they, it wasn't Jesus sure. walking me around. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. But they just were not that way. And, um, you know, uh, so... We just have to be ver- very, very careful. Mm-hmm. And uh, and as you look around at the protesters, a lot of these are white. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so right. I, what I would say is I think it's okay to pro- protest. You just can't be violent. I agree. You, you can't destroy. Mm-hmm. And there was something, and in, 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 I, I can't remember what newspaper I saw this morning, but I saw five black men, and they had yeah, surrounded, good. did it's you good. see it? Yeah. The, the police white officer. police officer. It was awesome. Who had got isolated. It was awesome. Mm-hmm. And they were screaming. That's did you right. see what they were screaming? Mm-hmm. You will not hurt him. That's mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. You will not hurt him. And that just, mm-hmm. in, in one of the most emotionally hopeless times, mm-hmm. that gave me hope. That's humanity that right is there. The, that's, yeah, well, and I hope those, those brothers were Christian. Man, I mean, that would be a, man. Mm-hmm. But, but they surrounded him. Mm-hmm. You will not. And they were in those protesters' face. You will not hurt him. And that was a big white dude. Mm-hmm. He yeah. was not skinny. I saw, yeah. He was yoked. Yeah. And he was standing there, and he doesn't know what to do. And I thought, yeah. that's what we need. We need to come to the rescue of each right. other when we see something like this. And that's why, again, who am I? I'm the white guy writing the ticket, mm-hmm. writing the report. Mm-hmm. And I got a black brother right here screaming, I can't breathe. Mm-hmm. I got to put this down and I got to say, hey, mm-hmm. hey. Um, and uh, and you know my story. I mean, I've been in Hawaii and I almost got killed by a woman swinging an axe. Mm-hmm. No, it's a real story. You got to hear it. <laughs> and you know what everybody was doing? All Hawaii my cell phone brothers and sisters? <laughs> everybody was filming me. 
being wow. chased by a woman no with an axe. Are you kidding me? No one came to my aid. So we have to come to aid That's, when we yeah, see somebody exactly. in distress. Uh, and, and sin in the Bible is sin of omission and commission. And so commission is what you commit. Yeah, omission uh -huh. is when you go, you there and oh, just, uh, yeah. Pontius Pilate. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Not me. Right. Well, it is you, Pontius. Mm -hmm. It is you. Mm -hmm. You know? And so we got to do that. Okay, go ahead. No. no you just got to press in. No, I was going to say right is right, wrong is wrong. That sounds simplistic, but it, it's a fact. <clears throat> it's not based on a person's gender, uh, a person's uh, color of the skin. It's just the fact that right is right, wrong is wrong. So if you're a black person, you see somebody abusing a white person or yeah. vice versa, as a Christian, you should step in. As yeah, come Christian. save me, Lacey. Yes. Come get me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Take that big black body. Get over right. here and save me. I'm a little white man. <laughs> right. Come on. Right. Preach, Jeff. Jeez. <laughs> I, would, I, just so, I would so love to say people judge me about my big body. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm a schmedium. Right. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. That's how the Lord That's made That's why Lacey you. don't even have to work out at the gym. Right. I'm over there sweating, <laughs> and right. Lacey's on the elliptical. <laughs> I love it. Okay, go ahead. I interrupted you. No, no. no. Let's go to the next okay, question. Okay, okay. Uh, why is it the American church seems to make little effort to create... Whoa, did I read that wrong? Seems to make little effort to create comfortable environment for minorities. I don't feel represented well in any space in my church, and it can feel isolating. I'm assuming they go to Sandals. Right. Look, Sandals is 60% white, and that varies based upon campus. Uh, and so what I would just say is I'm sorry. I I'm, doing, I'm doing the best that I can. When Lacey and I talk, we talk about how to, how to get more white people in his church. And I ask him, how do, how do we make Sandals um, more friendly uh, for people who are not white? Um, but here's the issue is some people like black church, and there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. We can't make your people come here. Like, and vice versa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... And I mean, I, oh my gosh, I got to preach at Lacey's church, let me tell you. Come on, right? It's way better than right. Sandals. Right. Stop. Way right. better. Exactly. <laughs> way better. You right. need to repent right now. Oh, right. no. No, I came up to preach. They were standing and That's clapping. Right. That's right. Clapping. <laughs> right. At Sandals Church, you guys put your heads down and look at your phones. Oh my gosh, it was so good. Oh my gosh. I was God. high for I a month. It. It, it. it was I love it. I love it. I love it. Good. It was good. So here, here's the thing is, and, and, um, and I would say the same thing about <laughs> police departments. How do we change police departments? We need more black people as police officers. Mm -hmm. Today, today, we yeah. need you as police officers mm -hmm. in those communities working with white people who may get frustrated when they deal with black communities because right, they start writing a story in their mm -hmm. mind. And, and here's the thing I've seen about police officers in general is they tend to, and I, I think it's inevitable because they deal with criminality, mm -hmm. they start to, to go weird with all people. Mm -hmm. And I have to remind my cop friends, you need to be around healthy, normal people that aren't ro lying to right. you, right. robbing right. you. Uh -huh. right. And I've watched you, my saying. friends, my friends yep. change over oh, yeah. time. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And and so 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 we need, you know, you need to have that black partner that you get in the car with. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And 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 just to be able to what was that about? Help me to understand that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um and and it is important. It is important. Uh, I, I think to our black communities that they have black police officers coming to the scenes. I think that's important. And and you know, I think we've made some progress, but we got a lot. We got a lot to go. I think the Hispanic community, like you said, like when you look at their numbers, mm -hmm. they're highly represented in the police community. Mm -hmm. I think it's like four times LAPD, four times as many Hispanics as there are African American mm -hmm. uh, cops. So we need you. Okay. So here's what I would say. Okay. Um, <clears throat> here's what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming she's black. He's black. Doesn't say whether it's a guy or a girl. This is why I've asked Lacey to serve on our board. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. I've asked Lacey. Mm -hmm to be in a position of power and authority over me. And he humbly uh, took that. So thank you. Mm -hmm. I realize I need to do that. I can't just, I can't just give it lip service. Mm -hmm. I, I have to hire Jeff, mm -hmm. right? I, do, I have to say, Jeff, you have a seat here. Jeff, mm -hmm. you're here. And we're trying to do that. We're trying to, to at least make our Sandals uh, staff um, identical to our communities. Mm -hmm. we're, we're trying to do that. It's not always easy, and you have to understand. And and, and you know, um, Lacey can't just hire any black person. Mm -hmm. He has to hire a black person who wants to go to his church, right, right. who agrees with his theology, right, 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 and right. and is into your style. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it creates right. It creates challenges for mm -hmm. a white pastor, who's and Lacey and I are both conservatives in our theology. Right. Not politics. Don't get it twisted. Right. Mm -hmm. We're both conservative in our theology, and just so you know, a lot of black pastors are. A lot of my black pastor friends are Actually conservative it, in their yeah, theology. The theology. Um, so, and then they got to want to work here for this guy. Okay. So let me, uh, Pastor Matt. <clears throat> yeah. 
one of the number one reasons um, I decided to work here was because in doing my research, um, you know, like, okay, that guy, you know, he, he can preach. He, he's funny. You know, yeah, tell I, he connect, he, connect, <laughs> <right>? <laughs> he connects, yeah. but I'm telling you it was, and I just told you this mm -hmm. before we started, mm -hmm. I looked up, um, in my research, I looked up that you did a panel session yeah. about mm -hmm. three years ago. Yeah. Lacey was on that. Mm -hmm. His sole job I was know. to keep me from dying. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I'm telling you, it, it said to me, wow, this guy, he cares. He cares, mm -hmm. and he's about moving um, the right agenda forward. Mm -hmm. Even yeah. though, and what I love mm -hmm. about you, Pastor Matt, is that you clearly say, "Hey, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't understand, but I, I know we need to do something." Mm -hmm. And so, by doing that panel and straight up, and this may offend some people, it may not, but I'm just telling straight up what you said in our first meeting, which is like the last meeting, you know, for me to get hired. I said Jeff, it actually helps the fact that you're black. Mm -hmm. It helps the fact you're black. Where we want to go, it helps the, uh, the fact that you're black. And I just thought, wow, mm -hmm. more white, listen to me, more white pastors need to be hiring black, Hispanic, Asian, mm -hmm. the right kind, right. the right ones, your theology, all that kind of, you know, going to want to, you know, want to be real with um, ourselves, God and others, you know, hey, you, you, is this the mission you want to go? Okay, yeah. all right. But you need to be finding those people and those individuals need to be searching out. Mm -hmm. And the same thing for the black churches. They Absolutely. need to be, I, and I said this at a conference years ago, mm -hmm. I said, listen to me, how awesome would it be as a black individual? You said, you know what, let me start finding white churches to be a part of. Mm -hmm. As a white individual. Let me start finding black church I need to be part of. Right. Because I'm telling you, where we need to go, it will only happen if we start divert making this um, the staff in our churches diverse. Mm -hmm. And that individual, that's clearly a black person right. at a white church. Clearly. Mm -hmm. yeah. And because it's 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 a lot easier. It's mm -hmm. so much easier right. to go with wh wh where they look like you. Right. where they worship like you. Right. Mm -hmm. But I discovered going to Anderson University where I discovered, oh, here are all the white people in corn are. Mm -hmm. You know, I decided, I, I discovered going there where I was pushed into this, I mean, the worship was so lame. Mm -hmm. and, and the preaching was so like, oh my God, he ain't hooping and hollering. Like, how am I going to get a word? Right. You know, for, for two years, I hated it. But my third year, I was like, okay, my fourth year, I ended up loving chapel. Mm -hmm. yeah. Chapel two times a week. I learned a loving chapel. And what I discovered, like, okay, mm -hmm. God, there's a side, there's a void, there's a, a space inside of me that you want me to receive this way. Mm -hmm. And then I, so I had to be pushed there and people don't want to get uncomfortable. People don't want to push there. And I fully believe that there are some people right now, white, black, Asian, Hispanic, where God has given you a mission to go to the other side. Mm. To but, bridge that gap. Yeah. but to bridge that gap mm -hmm. so that, mm -hmm. because uh, the way I see it, there's only one, one verse in the word of God, second Corinthians says, we have been given the ministry right. mm -hmm. of reconciliation. Of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. And so we've been given the ministry of reconciliation. So our churches need to be more and more reconciled. Mm -hmm. right. So, right. Yes. And that individual, I, I will challenge that person who sent that in or for somebody on the staff here to reach out to that individual because they're not upset yes. with sandals. Right. They would have been gone. Right, been if gone. we're uncomfortable, we leave. We just don't say anything. We leave. <laughs> so this individual, they want to be here. So mm -hmm. maybe that's a good conversation for the, you all to have face-to-face -to, -face yeah. to figure out how you can bridge that gap. <clears throat> yeah, yeah you know, when I pulled in here, did you guys see the black gentleman outside? No, no. you told me about it. Yeah, yeah, so there's a black gentleman outside, and um, he, he, you know, he, he was enthusiastic. Okay. Let's just say that. Okay. Um, and... Uh, you know, I, I stop and talk because he's got a mask on. So I couldn't tell, you know, I can't tell who anybody is anymore. And mm -hmm. so I recognize him and he, he's so sweet. He said, Pastor Matt, um, and I, I remember when he came to Sandals, mm. he told me, he said, there's not enough black people here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said, but we like it here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said, we feel called here. How are we going to get more people like us? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, can we start with you? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. So, and he moved in these houses right behind awesome. us. So I just said, I, I just said, give me your number. And I said, I'll call you immediately yeah, right. afterwards. So, so people who are part of the solution, man, I'll work with you all day. That's people right. who want to burn it down, I, know. I got no time for you. Mm -hmm. um, so let me, let me say this. What do we, the oppressed, need to do to be heard? I don't agree with the riots, but it feels like, though, we have tried every way to know to bring justice and to wait to raise awareness of inequality. Amen. I agree with you. Yeah. Who wants to take that one? There's no one answer. You know, the <laughs> word of God says these things must take place and then the end will come. Mm. Yeah. And I don't want to throw <laughs> a negative spirit here, but the truth is this is the way the world is going. We're moving further and further away from Christianity, 
further and further away from the truth. And it has to happen, but the church cannot lose its footing. But unfortunately, there will be wars, rumors of war. There will be racism. There will be murders and so on and so forth. But the church still has to hold up yes, the bloodstained yes, banner. Yes, yes, so yes, it, it's yes. a, a juggling act and nobody has all the answers. But if we say we want Jesus to come back again, we have to understand that these things must take place. Yeah. Amen. Uh, man, I just, uh, Ali, Ali cast 07. I just want to say thank you. I, I I hear you as a white person. I hear you. I, I think you're absolutely right. I think a lot of black people are exasperated. They're frustrated. It's like, what, what on earth do we have to do? Here's my hope. I think uh, the George Floyd killing, murder mm -hmm. in particular, I think the struck a chord. Yep. I think it struck a chord with yes. most white people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I can't speak for every white person. I can't look into my white crystal ball. Mm -hmm and say, white people speak to me now. It doesn't work that way. But I think most white people realized for the first time, hmm. indisputable e evidence, okay? And I know that if you're black, you're, you're, you're throwing your hand. Right. For the first time, mm -hmm. indisputable evidence that th this is a problem. This was, this was uncalled for. And I would even say this. You have sheriffs mm -hmm. who have got off their podium yeah, and right. joined the protests. That's right. So there's hope there. Th there's hope there. But we don't have to burn our communities down. We don't. We don't mm -hmm. have to destroy what little we have. Um, and and here's the thing: is you talked about education. I, I think we 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 educate our people about the sins of America, but we need to do a better job at looking what's happened in other countries where reconciliation hasn't happened. For example, Sarajevo. Mm -hmm. We're old enough to remember when they hosted the Olympics, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Sarajevo, Sarajevo mm -hmm. one of the bloodiest, ugliest racial things syria so if you if you if you're young you know syria syria was a prosperous you know now they had a dictator but that's the middle east mm -hmm. but it was a prosperous nation for a long time it's some place i wanted to visit i don't know if you mm -hmm. have you been there no so i mean it's gorgeous i mean many of the places the apostle paul goes mm -hmm. biblical sites are in syria devastated may never recover mm -hmm. may never recover i mean ever right. so uh you know these things happen uh, in africa black on black and, and these issues go back for centuries, tribalism. So, so we have to realize that I hear young people say this, it can't get any worse. Mm -hmm. And I say, you need to travel. Hmm. You need to travel. Hmm. Because I would rather spend every day of the rest of my life in a California DMV, and I, the DMV people in my church always get mad. Mm -hmm. Do you like going to the DMV? I do not. Do you? No. <laughs> Come on. No. <laughs> like, our, keep tithing if you work at the DMV. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we love you. I, the DMV is a model of efficiency mm. compared to many countries in the world. Mm. And so it can wow. get worse, and it can get horrendous. And, and racism is not something America has invented. It's something that we struggle with in our own way, and what makes it unique is the black-white. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. you're right. But it's, but it's, it's, everywhere, it's everywhere else, it and it's everywhere. presently everywhere else. And, uh, you know, we say Asian. The ch man, the Chinese, the Koreans, the Japanese, n none of them get yeah. along. They, they have historical mm -hmm. grievances. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. I was in Ireland. White people. I was in Ireland. Boy, you tell your last name, and they know instantly your accent. They know instantly mm. if you're Catholic or Protestant. Mm. I went to buildings, buildings, houses where white people put their face on it with bullets, and it's all the Irish Catholics Come they've on, killed. Man. Then I go to the other side of the city, and it's all the Protestants they've killed. Mm -hmm. They're praising them. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, you know, you know, I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, yeah. the, the Irish, you know, identify with Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. Irish. Mm -hmm. I was like, what? Mm -hmm. So, so this is everywhere. Okay, do you think the media and entertainment industry plays a part on how white people view the black community? You guys handle that one. <laughs> I mean. Um one hundred percent, and and I know they play such a role. Just so you know, it doesn't play a role on how white people view the black community. It also plays a role on how black people <laughs> view the white com a black community. Yeah, that's how powerful media is, mm -hmm. and so um, uh, and and so for and, and we're a society that I mean we're so screen um, uh, magnetized. Yeah, you know, um, and so so much that goes in. Um, seeps in, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and it and it ends up becoming your consciousness. It ends up becoming your um, unconsciousness of how you operate and act. And all you have to do is look at the history of media, and then look at media period, mm -hmm. and see that wow. If you really look at it and see how there is a side to it, and how they have an agenda to right. it, mm -hmm. you know, um, me. I so I used to be um, an entertainer. I used to be well, an actor, and I did stand up and all that. And the majority, Pastor Matt. 
Mr. Lacey, the majority of roles that my agent wanted me to um, um, go out for Stereotype. was the stereotypical mm -hmm. black young male. Mm -hmm. mm. And about half of them was like, man, I got to, okay, just how you said, you know, I ain't going to lie. Okay, I, I'm not going to lie. I actually like, yeah, I'm going to do it because I wanted that money. <laughs> yeah. You know, I wanted that fame. But now looking at it, I'm like, oh, my word. Mm -hmm. I, I would have totally, I would have totally just been a part of exactly what I'm truly against. Right. Mm -hmm. And and all of this, all of this, there's so much, it's economics, it's power, it's the media, mm -hmm. and the media pushing agenda. And my wife, who is a, I got a six feet tall white Dutch woman as my wife, come on. Um, <laughs> Dutch chocolate, come on, right? Dutch chocolate. I've um, never that's heard what, that. Right. Lacey hasn't heard it either. <laughs> Even though he's laughing, he has never heard right. that. Dutch chocolate. But what's amazing <laughs> is that what I've been, how I've been able to just educate my wife on, uh, look at that commercial. Yeah. Um, look, uh, look at that one scene. Look how they're displaying a person of color. Mm -hmm. Look how they're displaying um, that Hispanic person. Mm -hmm. And then it's like wokeness, right? It's like her eyes start to open. And I would say all of our eyes need to open. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the media complete and all you take all of the, I mean, all you have to do is just do a little research or go, um, you know, um, find your, your 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 favorite movies and just see the black actors yeah. and mm -hmm. see normally what I mean. Right. Denzel Washington got his first Oscar for um, Training Day. Mm -hmm. hmm. The this, tough black guy, the tough black backwards, mm -hmm. you know, um, corrupt, de corrupt <laughs> detective. He didn't get one for Glory. No, what? well, he he, he would no, he was um. Um, uh, lead the lead. I think he was just nominated, but I don't think he won. Oh. But regardless of all that, that, oh my gosh, that was that his first. Still makes me cry. Mm. You know, that was his first. You know, yeah. um, um, mm. Oscar mm. lead role Oscar. Yeah. And so it just go. Oh, let's praise them for that. Let's praise them yeah, for. No. You know, so I would say one hundred percent yes. One hundred. I would just yes. say in general, our media is not our friend. Mm -hmm. Hollywood is not your friend. It's why I don't like getting. I don't like getting these lectures from Hollywood. It's yep. like, look, man, you guys are, you know. I mean, has there been any greater profiteer off <coughs> violence than mm -hmm. Hollywood? Right, mm -hmm. right. I mean, it, it right. just no. is. It sales. Right. It sales. Yeah, it, it, so it just is. And, and what they glamorize and, and what, they, what they say, you know, this is what it means to, to be yeah. alive. Yeah. And it's just, it's, it's just destructive. Mm -hmm. And Okay, um, Kimmy Michelle says, is it fair, this is on here and on up there, is it fair to compare Jesus' turning over of the tables of the money changers to the protesting and rioting today? Mm -hmm. Who wants that one? Hot potato. Come on, Bishop. I wouldn't say that it is fair to compare, but there is a righteous anger. Yes. And, and that's the divide. Yeah. You have a right to be angry when you see something that is wrong, something that is injustice, but just to be angry to profiteer off it is, is wrong. Mm -hmm. you, you have to have that balance. Mm -hmm. So Jesus was absolutely right because they were, you know, uh, polluting his father's house. Right. And as Christians, we need to stand up and be angry when we see mm -hmm. injustice to not just black people, white people, or yes, just injustice right. 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 at large. So there's nothing wrong with that. We cannot be passive as Christians. Right. I don't believe in, in, in passivity. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in taking a back seat. I believe that God created us to take the world by storm. And too often we are afraid to lose friends or church members. Or we don't want people to criticize us. Here come these Christians again. But we should be on the front line. Mm -hmm. We should have some fire. Mm -hmm. We should call right is right, wrong is wrong, and not make any apologies for that. Yeah. And that's what we're seeing now to an extent, but will it last? We have these conversations, and we've been here before. As we talked about uh, Taisha Miller, you know, being mm, yeah, shot mm. right in Riverside, everybody gets on fire. But then we live in a 24-hour news oh, cycle, man. and we gnats. will forget yeah. this. That's right. And that's why, uh, before we go so. any further, I, mm -hmm. I want to say what's going to happen if they don't handle this case the right way, yeah. because they've already given Officer Derek with uh, manslaughter the and third-degree third murder. Right. That's from a black perspective. Sure. They're setting that up to say, okay, the max sentence is 25 years. Give him five years and he'll be out 18 months, two years mm -hmm. with good behavior. Mm -hmm. That's going to cite another right 100%. if they play that card. 100%. Yeah. So that's why we talk about injustice. <laughs> that's what we're talking about. We, we can see what's going on. And people yeah. say, oh, you're just complaining. He got time. He did his time. Now he can go live his life. No. He should be locked up with his past record and the brutality and the lack of compassion 
And when you look at his face, he was enjoying that. No, he was. He was. He was enjoying evil. that. Yeah, yeah. So we need to make Sick. sure that we call that out also, and that he's not just giving a pat on the back and released. Yeah, and 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 for you know those who are still on the fence about whether it was wrong, I just would encourage you <laughs> look into his eyes. He knows he's being recorded. He's looking right into the yeah, camera, yeah, yeah. and he's in a position of power. power. Mm -hmm. um, and look at his knee. He yeah. kept pressing the knee down yeah. over and over again. Yeah. And so here, and here's what I would say to all of our rioters. You are now in the position of power. Mm -hmm. How are you handling it? Mm -hmm. Like, right? So, so think about that. Power is this, you know, it's this, uh, it's this scary thing. Mm. And then when we get it, we, when you're in the power, when, when, when the police start backing up because you're marching, mm. then what do you do with that authority? What, mm. do you, what do you do in that moment? And it just shows you, man, we, we have to, you know, it's why our founding fathers, they got a lot of things wrong. One of the things they got right was a mistrust of power. Mm. It's a mistrust mm. of power, uh, and it's why we have the threefold system of right. checks and balances. Again, don't send me your text. I know it's broken. It works better than a lot of systems. It does. And so we have to be careful about power uh, in that thing. And so I would say this. Yeah, Jesus turned over the tables. He didn't burn the temple down. Right. The Romans did that. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. right. So, so, you know... Um, I, I think it's okay to, to disrupt. I mm -hmm. think it's okay uh, to be angry. It's okay to rage. Um, you know, one of the videos I remember from the LA riots is a black mm -hmm. barbecue owner from downtown. And he's, guys, guys, black guy's got to be in his 60s, 65, 70s, and he's crying. Mm -hmm. And he says, I spent my whole life building this mm -hmm. and I have nothing to give to my kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What happens to that guy? Right. You know, it's if you're a black person, you already know how hard it is to get a business going, to establish yourself. And when we tear down, you know, those those few individuals who have made it, man, like that's that's not the right that's not the right thing. Mm -hmm. um, and 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 you just got to be careful. I mean, people assume, you know, Lacey, I got, I man, I got people, you know, telling me I'm rich. Well, Lacey sets my salary, so <laughs> he doesn't know that yet. But <laughs> <laughs> the board sets my salary, so you could send your emails to Bishop Sykes uh, <laughs> about how rich I am. And uh, and Lacey, feel free to make that a true statement. Pray about it. Uh, <laughs> so, um, you know, people make some assumptions yeah, about how I look, do. the size of my church, mm -hmm. and... and mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I mean, I, shoot, I'd love to be rich. I'd love to be able to take that insult, but that's just mm -hmm. not true. Mm -hmm. But it, but it seems true mm -hmm. from somebody's perspective. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I, I was going to say, uh, Pastor Matt, um, one hundred percent. Listen to me now. One hundred percent. It it is wrong uh, for the violence and the um, and, and and the burning down and just the uh, the atrocities we see and then on top of that you're putting other good people in harm's way mm -hmm. good police police officers mm -hmm. and then you know the the um the owners the owners that have worked their entire mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. to get the little bit they do have mm -hmm. you know and that's what I heard TD Jake said you know um, exactly what you said the mm -hmm. same place that you 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 know um, that you live in you're defecating on right. TD Jake said something very very similar to that. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I do want to just help. Um, one of the things I think we can help with um, um, the people, our friends, our brother, sister of the lighter hue is that just kind of be careful of what you say. Yeah. Um, you know, um, you know, there's only certain things that can come and should come from uh, a black leader, a black community. Uh, some things can't come from, even though it's 100 percent true, mm -hmm. it, it can't come from uh, the person of the lighter hue. And so um, uh there is a mental illness going on and has gone on. And I promise you there, now there are some in the, in the individuals that are, they're just crazy. They're, mm -hmm. they're idiots, mm -hmm. you know, and they're just, oh, this is my opportunity, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but there are a good amount of these individuals who um, there's a mental illness that's going on and it's gone on ever since they've been born. Mm -hmm. And it's gone on for the last 401 years. And mm -hmm. so you're at a place, you know, I just talked to a really good friend of mine that you know, and um, he and his wife told me the story of their adopted son who ended up committing suicide a couple months ago. Mm. Uh, they told me the whole his whole story, and so since day one of his life, right, <clears throat> there has been um, a lot of tearing down of what should be right in right. his mind, yeah, yeah. and then he ended up taking his own life. Mm -hmm. He was not mentally stable, right. And so, um, and even so, the individual told me that he even threatened other individuals' lives. Mm -hmm. And so that's what's going to happen when you've been um, in a place mentally 
that just completely mm-hmm. tearing down what should have been fostered in love, mm-hmm. what should have been fostered in unity, what should have mm-hmm. been fostered in care, what should have been fostered in empathy. Mm-hmm. But, and, and those people coming, they came in, in, in uh, onto the scene later in his life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they did everything they could. In fact, I think he even said like to someone, uh, they told me that he said, how can I get them not to love me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's how, that's how far his mind mm-hmm. was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he was almost at a point, he wasn't, but he was almost at a point of no hope. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's where he just gave into it. Mm-hmm. And so we see a bunch of people who feel like there's no hope and they're giving into it. Yeah. Right. That's good. Yeah. yeah. And I would just say to, you know, some of the black people uh, in our church, um, he's talking about a white family. Yes. White. Right. Like white like me. Yes. Who adopted a black son. And I was there when he died. I know. I knew you were. You know, in the hospital. And he was surrounded Mm -hmm. by 11 or 12 white people Mm. who were weeping over his death. Mm. Right. And his cardiologist that was coming in to measure his heart rate, because his brain was dead, so they Mm. were going to measure his heart rate, Mm. was black. The black Mm. woman. Mm. And she Mm. cried. Yes, Mm. she did. Mm. And she said, and I'll never forget these words. She said, thank you for loving him. Mm. Mm. Thank you for trying to give him a chance. Mm. Man, that's good. Because it was moving for her as a black woman to see white people yes, mm-hmm. yes, devastated yes, 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 at the yes, loss yes. of this this kid. I don't know if you saw pictures of him. He's the most beautiful, stinking handsome. I know. Like, I know. It, I know. like mm. you know, I, you know, as he lay there, I just would stroke his hair and his mm. face, and he even in death he looked glorious. Wow. Like mm. so beautiful on the outside, but so broken on mm. the yep. inside. That's right, Pastor. Um, that's right. You know, and. And, and here's what I would say to everyone that's about ready to give ho- give up hope. So it's, w- what would you say has been the darkest, most racist state in our union? Like if you had to throw a, sta- a name out there. Alabama. Okay, Alabama, you got another one? Because that's not the state. I'm not saying he's wrong. Oh, I'll just help you. Mississippi. I mean, oh, like Mississippi burning, right? That's a movie that moved me. Okay. Um, you know, that that's when I first started to see the history of racism. So I, I was gathered f- at, at a conference like this. And I'm sitting next to, to the pastor of the largest church in Mississippi, hmm. mm. and he's white. Hmm. And here's what he said, Matt, I was born racist. I was raised racist. Mm. And he said, this needs to end. Yeah. Mm. So if you're a black person, I just want you to hear, hear me. Downtown Mississippi, mm. the largest, most successful church, okay, white guy, white guy, has told me, I was, I was, I was born into racism. I was a racist. This must end. The church will stand. Yeah, that's good. He said that not not in front of a TV camera. Got uh-huh. you, brother. Got you, brother. Not just he said it likes. to me privately. Mm-hmm. He said this has to end. Mm-hmm. And because Pastor Rick Warren called for a meeting, he got on an airplane at his own expense and flew here just to have a conversation about what to do. Mm. Uh, and part of his frustration, he told me this, Lacey, and this is why we're blessed to have a relationship, is is he can't he can't have the conversation with black pastors there. It, there's a wall. Mm. that he can't break through, mm-hmm. but he's willing. Mm-hmm. So we, we, that's why these relationships are so important, right. so important so that we can serve, you know, the, the, the John Gray, Stephen Furtick, yep. Yep. those sure. things are important yep. so that yep. we can move forward. Okay, yep. let's, um, mm. uh, and some of these are tough. You, you want them or no? He can have them. <laughs> <laughs> I defer to the bishop. Okay, does the Bible say anything about one race being more superior? Sincerely, underscore, I'm not even going to give your name so people mm-hmm. don't give you crap. In a word, no. Yeah. You know, God created right. mankind to be equal. Mm-hmm. He created us in his image. Now, the racial divide is, is always a, a power struggle, a money struggle. But no, we are to be on the level playing field. But yeah. because of, of racism, because of slavery, and, and that's something big that we really didn't touch on, that a lot of these young people are, are, are angry because of the history of slavery. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Sure. And they still feel that there's slavery going on right now yeah. because we never have really dealt with that. The fact that African Americans basically made America the greatest country on the face of the earth uh, during 400 years of slavery, right, sure. yeah. building the South and, and building the infrastructure, and, and now that's discounted. So there, there's a lot of anger when it comes to that, and, and that's not going to go away. So that needs to be addressed. Right. As far as us being disconnected from what's going on around us, you know, 
the church has to make that difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say, um, does the Bible say anything about one race being more superior? I would say no. And this is where I would really press into our current thinking. Uh, Christians get a lot of credit for Darwin's thinking, mm. <laughs> which is really unfortunate. Uh, Adolf Hitler didn't have an encounter with Jesus <laughs> where he realized that the Aryan race was superior. Mm. That thinking is a divorce from Lutheranism, and it's really the, the, to the total acceptance of, of this evolutionary theory. And then it's really resentment against Jews who did really mm. well economically mm. within mm. Uh, the German state. Right. And so a, a, a lot of the racist thinking Christians get stuck with is actually cultural thinking that's come from science, exactly, yeah. bad science. Yep. Go read a science book in the 1920s. <laughs> read one in the 1850s. Mm -hmm. Like the Bible, last time I checked, mm -hmm. still the same, right? Mm -hmm. But science mm -hmm. books keep, yeah. you know, and, and people say, people say, oh, you don't believe in science. No, no, I don't believe in scientists. Mm -hmm. That's the <laughs> good, problem. That's mm -hmm. Scientists, that's they're, they're the problem. And so so God chose one people, mm -hmm. the Jews. Read it. Read your Bible. Mm -hmm. Because they were the least wicked people. That's what it says. The least, least wicked, wicked people in the land of You're Canaan. Right. You're right. Mm -hmm. The least. You're right. And then he chose them to be a light unto the nations. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they went, we're chosen, and, and it didn't work out. And it takes Jesus to break that down, to break the dividing wall. Yep. That's what it says. The, the wall of hostility. The wall mm -hmm. of hostility. Mm -hmm. that's, what, that's what... The what, wall of hostility. You know, Paul says... To get us to come back together, and it took blood. Mm -hmm. The tree, mm -hmm. brother. The blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and we need to do that. And so the Bible gets a bad rap for a lot of things that culture brings. And it, right. it's really unfortunate. You know, these... Uh, have you been to the Bible Institute in D.C.? Oh, yeah. So oh did, you read, did you read the slave Bible? Uh, I probably did. So the slave Bible is an edited version. No exodus oh, in the right, slave Bible. Right, 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 right. No, we are all, like, certain verses were taken out, and these black preachers had to preach, preach. from this edited version, mm -hmm. because the true gospel, right, Come reconciles. The right. true gospel sees you as my brother. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, and the slaves had to, the slave owners had to, to delete that from that. And that's also why I think we're segregated to keep us apart, because w when Lacey hangs out with me, he's like, man, this white guy's all right. <laughs> right? And we get to spend time together, and 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 I and I know that Lacey has wisdom. Like you, you've known him for an hour and thirty-two minutes. You already can tell yes. he's willing to speak the truth, even if it costs yep, him. That's right. Those are the kind of men I want that's in my right. life. That's mm -hmm. right, Pastor Matt. That's who I want speaking into my life. Not a white dude. Mm -hmm. I want a real dude, and that's who he is. And I realize that right, like like instantly. I'm like, this guy's a leader. He's a leader, and. Uh, you know, and, and, and we need to encourage each other. And we really got our friendship going when I, I can't remember if I called you. I don't think texting was in when they bought their building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm yeah. so happy for Amen. you because I know what it means to be homeless. Right. And I know how hard that is. Mm -hmm. And I was so proud for him. And, and changed our ministry. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and God's, God's blessed him. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm proud of that. Um, there was one other question I wanted to ask, and then we'll close. Uh, here we go. Um, Uh, understandably, I've seen a lot uh, of people saying it's not their job to ed educate us. Uh, sorry, POC, people of color. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. We needed some young people <laughs> to <laughs> translate. <laughs> I've seen a lot of people of color saying it's not their job to educa educate us. Uh, on I almost said educate educate us on on how not only to not be racist but anti-racist. With that said, what are some good resources that we can turn to to educate ourselves to do better? I'm going to pitch this to, to uh, the bishop. He, he doesn't like me calling him that, but that's what he is. <laughs> um, I would say this, Lacey, that a book, like a professor can hate God and teach the Bible. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So I can, re I can read a book about you, mm -hmm. or I can say, Lacey, I love you, my brother. I want to spend time together. To I want to learn to know from you. you. I want to know you. And, and here's the thing. I want to fellowship with you. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh -huh. So having said that, there probably are some resources, but until you have black friends. That's right. Come on. Come I, on. I, don't, right I don't know how it works. Say it. Jesus right didn't say get a manual. Right. Mm -hmm. He said break bread with right. one another. That's right. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so are, is there any resources that you can think? 
Well, you, you hit the nail on the head. You just have to spend time with that individual because there are, I've said this before, there's black people that I don't like and you'll find people that you don't like, but that does not discount the whole race. And the only way you know an individual is to spend time with that individual. That's yeah. why you and I have a relationship. That's why we can laugh together, we can cry together, we can be upset at one another, but we still love one another yeah. because it's all about relationship. And that's the reason why marriages fail, because you don't really have a relationship, mm -hmm. you have a partnership. Right. Mm -hmm. So when it's going to come to racial reconciliation, you just need to step out there and try it. If you fail that particular person, it does not mean you're a failure. It just means that that person was not for you. You're not going to get along with everybody. Mm -hmm. And there's no sin in that. It does not make you a lesser person. It does not make you a racist. So it's just an individual thing. Mm -hmm. But you have to have that spirit that I'm willing to try. You might get your feelings hurt. You might be disappointed. But you cannot judge a whole race based on your interaction with one individual. Because mm -hmm. I've had racist acts done mm -hmm. to me mm -hmm. by white people. The reason I got out of the Navy was a racist situation. Mm -hmm. I loved the Navy. I was good at my job. But because of a racist situation, I got out four months before I was ready to re-enlist, while well, I was scheduled to re-enlist. Mm -hmm. Because I was just a young man. I was angry. It was clear racism. Mm -hmm. And the captain of the ship sided with the white guy. I was ticked. Yeah. And I got out of the Navy without any idea what I was going to do. You cannot let anger, God bless me after the fact, but you cannot allow anger to control that. That was a bad situation with one white guy that we got into a scuffle, but that did not shape my attitude toward all white people. And that's the bridge we need to, to cross. There's bad black people, black white, white people, as I stated, but you need to judge people based on the character, mm -hmm. based on who they are. Yeah. Amen. Mm. Amen. Let's, let's close with that. Yeah. Um, Thank you, uh, Bishop Sykes, for being here. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks for inviting us. Of course. Yeah, yeah, and uh, just know, Sandals Church, we're trying. Yep. Um, you know, if, if, if we lose hope here, you know, in our churches, there's no hope out there. Mm -hmm. And so right. um, I know a lot of you are angry and frustrated, and I just want you to think about what Bishop Sykes says. He, he, he got angry, and he made a decision that could have ultimately derailed his career. So in your anger, do not sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't do something mm -hmm. when you're angry. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not the time to right. talk about every issue in the marriage <laughs> when you're angry. That's not, you know, right. uh, I, I made it a habit. Uh, I learned early on as a father, the time to discipline my children mm -hmm. was not when I was angry. Yeah, that's good. Right. It just mm -hmm. was not the time. Mm -hmm. uh, anger gives you permission to do things you wouldn't normally do. Right. And that's why people end up in prison. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, that person was a good person. Everybody is until they're not. <laughs> and so just know, man, your anger can get the best of you. I've been there. Um, Tammy and I got away uh, just for, I, I'm not kidding you, we were gone one night. We had no TV. We just sat on the beach, mm. stared at the waves, mm -hmm. and we played backgammon. We've been playing backgammon. Mm -hmm. That's good. And I told my wife, I said, that one day has been the most restful week I've had. Wow. Mm. Wow. Mm. I just needed that. Yeah, man. I just needed it. And I could feel, I could feel mm -hmm. myself being worn out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And this right. process before this mm -hmm. has been wearing. Right. And it's been hard on people. And guys, black, white, whatever your race is, this is going to be the toughest economic situation. If, if, if God mm -hmm. magically waves his hand and racism is over, we are, we are in a dogfight here. Absolutely. Right. And we need everybody working together. together. Um, together, together, man, mm. and 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 here's the thing. I mean, you know, most I always love it when you know they they point out these countries that are all ethnically the same. Mm -hmm. Sweden's never going to have the same problems we do. Mm -hmm. Japan's never going to have no. the same problems we do. <laughs> Saudi Arabia's never going to have the same problems mm -hmm. we do because America is the one place no where one. people I'm from all ev everywhere right. are trying to live the together. The melting pot. Yeah. Yes. And and right, uh, it's going to be tough. Mm -hmm. So we have to quit pointing mm -hmm. to Europe. Where they're not white, they're French, German, Belgian, Swedish. Mm -hmm. You know, t tell a Northern Irish person that he's the same as a, as a, as, a, as an Irish Irish person. An Irish person will tell you, that, you know, Irish needs no adjective. You know, <laughs> I mean, they get <laughs> right, they get upset. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, tell somebody from Welsh they're English. Mm -hmm. Tell a Scot he's English, mm -hmm. and and that's the thing is we, we got to understand a, a lot of these countries don't have the issues we have. Because they're all the same people group. That's good. They come from the same family mm -hmm. for a couple thousand years. Mm -hmm. We're not that way. Um, you know, uh, 
M most blacks were brought here as slaves. Mm -hmm. You know, my family came here because their own kings were starving them, and there was no potatoes. Mm. And we, sh you know, we showed up on the shores, skinny, infected, and lice filled, mm -hmm. with signs that said "Irish need not apply." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was that was America's grand interest. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or you could go fight in the war, uh -huh. and you got your citizenship. Right. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. there's there's a lot of ugliness there. Uh, black people have been on the worst receiving end, mm -hmm. and that's true. Mm -hmm. um, but America's a great experiment. It I is. hope it works because again, it, go ahead. Not to cut you off, we don't want the sympathy, as I mentioned earlier. No, no, no. We, we empathize, but we don't need sympathy. Yeah. Did I? Did I? No, no, no. I'm just okay. saying. Just no, you can the rebuke. general he, audience. The bishop can rebuke. He can rebuke. I can. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just I, to I, the I general went, audience. Oh my job. You know, because sometimes <laughs> people say, "Oh, poor." Black people. No, 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 no. no, no, no it, it's no. not uh, the sympathy, but we do need people to empathize with our plight. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's good. It's good. And, and call and call a spade a spade, mm -hmm. right? Right. It, that was wrong, mm -hmm. man. Yes, I right. love police. And let me just say this: I got a I got a text message from one of our black members, and her name is Wendy, and she's a single mom, mm -hmm. and her son's a police officer who also mm -hmm. is black. Mm -hmm. And she said to her white pastor, mm -hmm. "Would you pray for my son?" Mm -hmm. Because I don't want him to be hurt. Mm. Of course. And uh, and of course, because every black life matters. Absolutely. Every That's right. one. That's right. Mm -hmm. Everyone. That's right. And I said, of course, I'll pray for him. And I can't imagine how hard that is for a black individual to resonate with a lot of mm -hmm. what's being protested, mm -hmm. but at the same time doing their job, believing in this country and having hope. And I praise God for her son and, and, and just prayed for Wendy and and what she's going through, and, and, and that's real. We gotta remember that a lot of our, our black, a lot of our officers are black. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is scary stuff. Yeah. Right. So, um, Bishop Sykes, would you pray for yes, us? Please. And uh, And again, I know a lot of you at Sandals, you're like, oh, I didn't know. Well, mm -hmm. you know, we don't, we don't talk about a lot of the structures at our mm -hmm. church. That's not one right. of the things that we have, but, but you know, uh, I'm trying to think how many board members we have, five, six? Six, including me. Six, yes. Yeah, six, including me. So Lacey is one of the five mm -hmm. that that helps guide me and keep me on the straight and narrow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. So uh, would you pray for us, yes, um, Lacey, and just you know, and pray for our church, and uh, and and then you know, just as the Spirit leads you. And thank Amen. you again for watching. We love you. Uh, Bishop's going to close us out. And thank you for having us. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the privilege and the power of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before your throne of grace seeking your guidance and your wisdom. You created us to be a people, not a separate people, but those who bow and need to Jesus. We are family. So, Father, we pray over the family unit, the white church, the black church, the Latino church, the Asian church. We pray that the church will be unified, that we'll uplift the bloodstained banner, that we'll tell the world that there is a difference in Jesus Christ. Father, we pray over our country still the greatest country on the face of the earth. But we pray, Father, that you allow us to push beyond past hurt, past pain, past frustration, and allow us to realize that we are Americans, not black Americans, white Americans, and the list goes on and on, but we are Americans. Father, allow us to realize that you allowed us to be at the forefront of this world because mm -hmm. we abstain who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. So, Father, heal our land. Mm -hmm. I pray over every church, Father, that's open in your name. I pray that you will anoint every pastor, allow that pastor, male or female, Father, mm -hmm. to realize that you have given them a word mm -hmm. to bring healing throughout this land. We stand against division within our churches. We stand against negativity. Father, just have your way. Yeah. This is a great opportunity for the church mm -hmm. to be the church. Yeah. Father, we apologize for thinking that we have all the answers. Sometimes you allow these things. It's never your will. True. But you allow these That's things right. so yeah. we can mm -hmm. pause mm -hmm. to turn back to you. That's right. So, Father, use this current situation as an opportunity to pull more people into the faith. That's right. That's right. We pray that more people will realize that the only hope they have is to receive Jesus Christ as their That's Lord right. and Savior. Yes. Father, I thank you for my friend, Pastor Matt. Mm -hmm. I thank you for his heart. Yes, you have Lord. blessed yes. him, Father, yes. here at Sandals and beyond. Yes, you have given him a worldwide platform. Yes, so I pray, Father, over his yes. life. I pray that you give him the strength that he gets the right rest that he needs. Yes. I pray for Tammy, Father. Mm -hmm. She is a, a co-worker right. in the ministry with him. Right. And sometimes she doesn't get the credit that she deserves. Mm -hmm. So, Father, gird them up. Yes. We just thank you, Father, for this opportunity to share our hearts. We don't have all the answers, but we know you do. Right. So, Father, mm -hmm. release us mm -hmm. all, those who know Jesus, release us all to tell our testimony right. 
and tell the mm -hmm. world that there's hope in Christ. Father, we submit this prayer unto you. It's in Christ Jesus' name mm -hmm. we pray. Amen. 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 It'll be just a second or two before we go off. So we love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, this is the first of many conversations to come. Mm -hmm. I'm praying about my sermon this weekend mm -hmm. uh, in Elevate. Um, and I think God has a word. So mm -hmm. pray for me uh, as, a, as a white pastor yep. mm -hmm. who uh, preaches a message to a very diverse congregation. Mm -hmm. So Lacey, we love you. We love your church. Love you Jeff, yep. welcome. Thank you. Yes, thank welcome. You. Thanks, God bless, guys. Thank you.